Welcome back to the channel. For the last few episodes, we've been adding parts to the boat frame. In this episode, I'm going to try to convince you guys and myself that removing wood is actually forward progress. Thanks for joining. Well, the epoxy is set up really nicely overnight, and before the sun hits the outside of the shed and makes it a little bit too bright, I'm going to get the clamp stripped off and set my laser up at the stem, uh, shining afterward, and mark the actual true center line of the keel. Well, just by sighting down the pencil line, it looks like the key elimination wound up reasonably straight. Uh, there was always some possibility that there'd be some slight variation as you move forward to aft, uh, because I did cut the notches in the station molds just slightly wider than the stock to make sure that I wasn't going to be struggling to get anything put into place. Uh, ultimately, it's not going to be of any concern, uh, because the most important thing is that the keel, as it gets shaped to its final shape, uh, winds up taking on uh, a cross section that's the same as what you would have at the station molds if they were to come up to a point. Uh, probably a better way of explaining this is to show you this SketchUp model. And as you can see here, uh, the station mold, if you continue up uh, the sweep of the top sides or the sides of the triangle to a point, uh, that's what the keel is going to wind up being at each of the station molds. And then by fairing those cross sections together, you wind up with a seamless fair surface for mounting the bottom planking. So the next step is going to be to cut off all this excess up here at the bow and also start trimming uh, to width as the keel does get a little bit narrower uh, as it moves forward and get kind of a rough shape. The main goal is to get uh, most of this work done while I still have easier access and before I put in the build stringers and any of the other uh, boat framing. So the reason I put all these little squiggles right here on the stem is that this part of the stem is laid out really accurately to the lofting provided by the designer. And I want to make sure that as I take a power planer to the keel uh, that I don't wind up getting into this and uh, scalloping out beyond what the designer had intended for the, the stem shape.
I know you guys have seen me use the power planer numerous times before, but I just want to put out there that uh, it's one of my absolute favorite tools right alongside the wood eraser, uh, which I'll be introducing when it comes time to shape the stem. Anyway, the key to using this tool is to start out with a setting about half as aggressive as you think you might want to be, and just as soon as you get the feeling that you're about ready to make a mistake, stop and dial the tool back to a, a more subtle cut. And even though this particular planer has marked graduations that'll tell you the cutting depth, it's important to remember that on a convex surface, uh, a setting of zero is still going to make some sort of a cut. My usual plan of attack once I start planing a keel is to first eyeball the angle of the station molds at each station mold location and make those first handful 6, 8, 10 passes as close to that angle on each side as I can approximate by eye uh, in order to kind of establish the twist that the keel angles are going to take down the length of the hull. Once I get a handful of passes in and the wood that's coming off is pretty much the full width of the blade and I start getting down within uh, maybe a half an inch by eyeball uh, of the station mold, then I start uh, taking a straight edge like you see here and I just lay it against the bevel that I've cut. I compare it to the angle of the station mold and it's always just a series of slight rolls one way or another uh, to reestablish that angle. Uh, until it really lands nice and solid and matches a station mold. I'm really not focusing too much at this point on the areas of the keel that lie in between the station molds, uh, only taking off just enough to allow the planer to run uninterrupted uh, up and down the length of the keel, and most importantly, not taking too much off. Now that the starboard side of the keel is roughly to its final shape, I can move over to the port side and try to get it to approximately the same level of completeness. At this stage, what I'm doing is I'm comparing the pencil line that I drew down the center of the keel earlier, and I'm looking at how much meat is really left on the keel, and it should be roughly symmetrical on both sides of the pencil line, uh, with the end goal, of course, being that once the keel is in its final shape, that the point that's formed meets right at the pencil line. This is certainly looking pretty good so far, and really, if the first few station molds wind up meeting at that pencil line, uh, generally it's going to wind up looking just as good all the way down the length of the keel. So I'm off to a strong start. Well, just like it happens lots of times, I had a fixed amount of time today to spend working on the boat, and I've now run out of it uh, with just enough time to grab the camera and talk to you guys for a second before I have to head off for dinner. Anyway, uh, so much for rough fairing. I got into a zone that sometimes happens and have rough fared the keel all the way down to the motor transom and actually come back and gotten at least the forward section pretty close to its final shape. 
uh, pending maybe a little bit less rushed, uh, a little bit more careful final evaluation. One more thing that has become really apparent to me that I'm so glad I did, another happy accident, is I'm so glad that I built this strong back up off the ground as opposed to putting it down low like the uh, designer had originally done. It has been the perfect walkway for me to just go along, uh, work on the keel, be able to see things uh, clearly, uh, be able to reach everything, and uh, yeah, I'll take it. My good luck's running well for me today. It was right about here that I set the bench plane down and turned to the camera and launched into a long-winded but perfectly delivered oration uh, about how I had headed out into the boat shed intending on finishing up fairing the keel, but instead how uh, I just let my OCD get the best of me, and instead I spent my time fairing in the framing and the transom for the port side of the boat. Uh, really what I'm doing here requires little explanation. It's as straightforward as it looks. Uh, I just laid a batten across the station molds, uh, let it take a fair curve, and where it intersected anything that stuck out too far, I just started erasing wood until uh, there was no longer anything in the way. Uh, overall, it was a nice couple hours out in the boat shed. It was soothing listening to the rain hit the plastic, but it was utterly impossible to extract any usable dialogue from uh, all that I had recorded while I was out there. Uh, just the sound of the rain was uh, overwhelming. That shouldn't be particularly surprising, yet here I am surprised uh, that it's as bad as it was. Anyway, instead, you're going to get a little music and I'll be quiet and we'll get this side of the boat uh, fared in at the aft end.
Unlike a few days ago when I came out here and it was raining, today I actually feel like getting the rest of the keel uh, planed down to its pretty much its finished shape. Uh, the important lesson with that that I've learned over the course of uh, several builds, uh, not to mention other large projects that I you know, have control over the timing on, is that there's no reason to push myself to do something that doesn't sound like fun on any particular day. Uh, there's lots of opportunity to get caught back up, and today I feel like planing the rest of this down. So anyway, that's exactly what I'm going to do, uh, get this plane down to its final shape, and then work on the starboard side, uh, aft framing, same as I got done the other day, and hopefully get everything just about the same spot and ready for the uh, build stringers to drop right in. Although I didn't catch it on camera, and a couple times during the fairing process for the keel, I took one of my longer uh, inch by inch and a half battens and laid it on both sides uh, of the keel right at the very top of the station molds and kind of checked to see uh, if I was leaving a hump in the areas in between the station molds. Now, the main way to tell that that's not happening is by looking at the laminations of the plywood and then the inner and outer uh, pieces of Douglas fir and as you can see it's symmetrical and the curve that's formed by this little plywood layer right here is fair so if I had left a hump in between the station molds what you would see is a little zigzag uh, in this plywood layer and that's something that I'm not seeing as I side up and down the length of the keel
Well, that's going to do it for getting the aft end framing and the keel uh, fared into their final shape. So there's three things that I hope to get across about fairing uh, with this episode. Uh, number one, fairing is tedious. Uh, number two, that you really should take your time, be conscientious, and slow down to a more precision tool when the time comes. And three, that fairing is tedious. So this is only the first of three major fairing episodes that's going to have to happen over the course of this build uh, with the next one being fairing in the planking prior to uh, covering it with dynel and then once the dynel is on then the final fairing of the hull and both of those are going to be uh, positively miserable but also huge milestones anyway thanks for watching so far in the next episode it's going to get more exciting we're going to put the build stringers in and Maybe do a little science experiment and try to get the chines and the shear strakes bent to their final shape and installed. Thanks for watching. <music>